Vast stretches of tropical rainforest harbor millions of diverse plant and animal species, most unknown to science and many of value to humankind. People throughout the world are beginning to appreciate the global importance of the rainforest at the same time as this lush paradise is steadily being destroyed. But it may not be too late to forestall this imminent disaster. In Costa Rica, scientists are working with policymakers to confront the challenge, devising practical means to restore and sustain the land while meeting the people's economic needs. The first step from science to practical action is understanding the complex ecological, economic, and social dynamics that have led to massive deforestation. A primary cause of deforestation is the widespread practice of clearing land for ranching and farming. Paradoxically, rainforest lands are not suitable for sustained ranching or standard agriculture. One of the big surprises about tropical rainforests for those who first, when they first come to know about them, is they look at these giant trees like this one here, covering the ground, lush vegetation from the ground all the way up to the canopy, and they think that that must mean these forests are sitting on extremely fertile land. Land then that might lend itself to other types of land use, like agriculture. That's one of been, it's been one of the sad ironies about tropical rainforest loss, because the truth is all this productivity is built into the plants themselves. The soils are very poor, and when the forest is cut down, it's a great challenge to devise ways of using those lands in a sustained manner. The poor soils of deforested lands not only limit agricultural productivity, but further fuel the relentless push of the agricultural frontier into the tropical forest. The small farmer is probably very often the innocent victim of uh, la larger strategies by big landowners, particularly those who have cattle, and who use the small farmers to clear the forest, letting them cultivate for one or two years, but eventually to establish pastures. These pastures may stay for a few years, but then they degrade, there is soil compaction, and there is uh, uh, also uh, lowering of the fertility, and the grasses become invaded by lots of weeds, then no more pasture can be maintained, and then a new piece of forest is to be cleared. The pressure to cut forests, clear land, farm for a while, and then move on is becoming more intense as the number of landless peasants is increasing. Added to these population and economic pressures is another source of deforestation. The demand for wood products is growing. Trees are being felled indiscriminately for the timber industry, which has virtually no reforestation programs. The, the situation is right now one of crisis because we estimate that within six or seven years, there simply will be no more timber here, no more trees to be cut, except of course those within national parks, which are prohibited from cutting. Costa Rica must now import wood. It has been estimated that the wood import bill for Costa Rica starting in 1995 will reach $350 million per year, a staggering sum for a country only the size of West Virginia and with limited foreign exchange. As Costa Rica's forests diminish, her extensive system of protected forests, including national parks and private reserves, is under increasing threat of the chainsaw. Well, our system of protected areas uh, comprises 27% of Costa Rica's land area. We are in a situation where that 15% that is privately owned or invaded by peasants is subject to very intense pressures. And we're trying to introduce the concepts of sustainable development, of teaching the farmers and the peasants in those areas how to survive without destroying the forest, how to make a decent living 
without destroying the forest, by doing agroforestry, by doing nature tourism, by doing agriculture in those areas where agriculture can be done sustainably and will not end up destroying the land uh, as it has often happened uh, in the past. The fact that many of the landscapes in the wet lowland tropics have been deforested, converted to pastures, means that we've got to find ways of replenishing those nutrients to restoring the sustainable use of these degraded landscapes. If we can come up with viable ways of replenishing the nutrients in these degraded lands, then we can take some of the pressure off of the national parks and equivalent reserves that the people are continually putting pressure on because they've got to raise subsistence crops to feed their families. Research in relation to trees, and I would even say farming systems involving trees, is an essential ingredient, but one which has been given very little attention in this country. Uh, this uh, extremely small amount of money is being spent for research. We need research for reforestation of degraded areas. Thus we see that healing the scars of deforestation must begin with systematic research that can lead to ecologically sound practices that support the economic needs of the people. The OTS Trials Project, funded by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, is addressing these global issues of degraded lands in the lowland wet tropics by testing several dozen tree species to see how rapidly they grow, how effective they are in replenishing the nutrients in these degraded pastures, and exploring the economic uses of many tree species. If farmers can survive by growing permanent tree crops that continually improve their land, they will no longer need to cut new forest. If commercial foresters are introduced to valuable trees that grow well, along with the knowledge to raise them, pressure to remove protected status from Costa Rica's remaining natural forests will be eased. These are the needs that give the Trials Project its purpose. Meeting them requires a careful experimental design and years of hard work. The Trials Project, located at the La Selva Biological Station in northeastern Costa Rica, has two major components. The first is a species elimination trial to determine which trees have the fastest growth across a variety of conditions and which will not thrive at all. The second component studies how various species affect the physical and chemical properties of the soil. This information is essential because it allows scientists to determine which species will have the ability to restore depleted soils. The choice of species for the trials project has been a long and complicated one. We, so we have looked at many dozens, in fact, we've looked at hundreds of candidate tree species. And then out of that list, we have selected those that appear to have high growth potential, potential use, usually for timber, but not necessarily so, as well as some of the other less traditional uses, such as fruits, edible fruits, uh, fuel wood, uh, and even re more explicitly rebuilding the nutrient stocks of the soils by focusing on certain nitrogen-fixing tree species. The Trials Project is, is looking at a whole series of native forest trees. In the past, by and large, when we've thought about increasing forest resources in an area, we've almost always brought in exotic species. And, and utilize those species because the manufacturing techniques for those particular species were understood. We know from experience that some of the fast growing exotic species that we've used have actually harmed the soil and harmed the environment in which we grew them. Presumably native species don't do that or they would have been selected out over eons. 
Although the Trials Project emphasizes tropical native trees, several well-known exotic species are included in the study, pine, eucalyptus, and melina. By comparing the growth of the relatively unknown natives to the thoroughly researched exotics, the project will have a yardstick that forestry professionals understand and can use to evaluate the potential of tropical native hardwoods. To test the tree's response to the various soil and vegetation types found within the region, trees were planted on four different types of deforested sites. We specifically searched for the kinds of lands that need these restoration experiments, rehabilitating the nutrient stocks of these degraded soils. And fortunately, OTS was able to come up with a most appropriate site. Um, they were able to buy 100 hectares, which is 250 acres of virtually pure pasture on very steep slopes, some slopes that are so steep that you can barely walk on them. Nevertheless, those slopes had been cut down, the forest had been cut down on those slopes and put into pasture. Those are precisely the kinds of lands that we think have to be brought back into sustainable use. Growing species about which almost nothing is known required the sustained effort of many people. Costa Rican forester Eugenio Gonzalez has played a key role, putting more than full time into gathering seeds and working with the native tree species. New procedures had to be developed for every step of the husbandry process, from locating the mother trees, to keeping a seed registry, to germinating seeds, to seedling care in the nursery, to planting the seedlings out in the field, no small task, and plantation maintenance. And at every step of the way, collecting data. Large computer databases have been developed, here attended to by Costa Rican forester Mariano Espinosa. Results are already coming in. We're already beginning to see signs that some of the tree species are improving the conditions uh, on the site in terms of nitrogen and phosphorus. We don't have much good strong data yet. That'll take another year or two. But already we can begin to see encouraging signs that the trees are in fact making the, the place in which they live a better place, not only for them, but for associated species, particularly of plants at this point. Even in the two short years of the trials project, we've obtained some outstanding results. Tropical trees grow very fast with this kind of rainfall. We have tree species that are four and five meters tall already. So growth rates are pretty phenomenal. The initial results suggest that there are several native tree species, tree species from right here at the La Selva Biological Station that have outstanding potential for reforestation projects, whether they be on small farmers' lands or larger scale commercial plantation forestry projects. Based on such promising results, the second phase of the trials project proposes to work with local landholders to test the best species in the real world of farms and plantations. Outreach programs promoting promising native species have already begun in classes at the local high school and at workshops for extensionists and farmers. The Costa Ricans are ready. Farmers are experimenting with new trees through locally initiated cooperative village nurseries and reforestation efforts. They are eager for information. The hope of a better way of life for themselves and for the country, a way of life that can coexist with the forest, keeps them working hard. With sufficient support, knowledge gained in the trials project will soon be in their hands. <laughs>